took the position of sitting on the throne of Vishnu in the house of Srivastakur during the Kirtan and then maintain the mood of his original identity, which is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the source of everything. And then he asked the devotees to begin the uh, Abhishek. So they did Abhishek and they offered many, 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 many coconuts and so many other valuable edibles. And there was much kirtan, much ecstasy, much happiness. After all the worship was over, then the Lord started to speak individually to the devotees there. And first he uh, addressed Srivas Dakor and, and explained how the Lord had personally entered his heart when he was feeling sad because of what happened in Devananda Pandit's ashram. And uh, the Lord gave him a uh, special happiness within his heart so he could feel satisfied in reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, what after that was happened to the Lord, then the Lord turned his attention to Uh, let's see, he's, this was to Advaita Charya and other devotees. He said, uh, do you remember at night I came to you as a doctor and sat next to your bed? I cured your fever. Upon hearing this from the Lord, the devotees would fall down overwhelmed by uncontrollable spiritual emotions. When the Lord takes another form just to serve his devotees because the Lord will not limit his way to serve. He'll serve his devotees in whatever way that will benefit the devotees. So when he, when you become sick, he becomes your doctor. And of course he gives you he gives you the advice on what medicine to take, but he also gives you the real medicine, Enechi Asadi, Ausadi, Enechi Asadi Maya Nasi Bhadalagi, Harinam Mahamantra Lautumi Magi. This is the real medicine, the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Then the Lord turned his attention on Ganga Das, Bhattacharya. The Lord said, Do you, does your mind not recall the night when you were escaping from the Muslim king, fearing capture? Your whole family was accompanying you when you arrived at the ferry Jetty, there was no boats. You were in great dilemma. That night was turning to dawn and still no boats were in sight. You began crying in anxiety. You shuddered at the thought that the Muslims might molest your family in your presence. And so it was better to drown in the Ganges, you thought. At that moment, I appeared as a boatman rowing a boat towards you. Your spirits no, no. lifted, seeing the approaching Your spirits lifted, seeing the approaching boat. You spoke to me, the boatman, with affection, saying, My dear brother, please take me across. I surrender my body, wealth, life, everything to you. I solely depend on you. Here are a couple of rupees for your endeavor. Take me and my family to safety. And I ferried you and your family across and returned to my eternal abode, Vaikuntha. Upon hearing this, Ganga Das was carried on the waves of blissful ecstasy. Such are the pastimes of Lord Gaurasunda. 
Lord, continue. Do you recall that incident? You were so worried and I came to rescue you and brought you across. Gangadas, unable to contain himself further, fell to the ground and rolled in ecstasy. Lord Chaitanya, the Lord of Vaikuntha, was sitting on his throne, his body covered with sandal paste, sandalwood paste and nicely decorated with flower garlands. His servants were fanning him. They arranged his hair nicely. Others were preparing betel, and many were dancing in ecstasy all around. The entire night passed in the darkness stole the night that came into night was that stole the night it was went unnoticed. Then suddenly our devotees realizing it was night, they lit lamps, they offered worship to the lotus feet. They began playing kirtans, uh, performing kirtans, playing cartels, gongs, conch shells, mudangas, and various stringed instruments. The Lord was in a benevolent mood and remained silent. Devotees offered flowers, praying to the Lord, please protect me. Some cried out in humility. Others were singing in praise, calling and crying shouts. No one could hear anything else. Devotees were feeling that they were being transported immediately to the spiritual world. The Lord exhibited his supreme opulence and they and the devotees encircled him and with prayers with great reverence as he assumed his Vaikuta form. The, then the Lord changed into a casual manner, placing his lotus feet upon the devotees. Lord, the Lord was in such a magnificent mood. He was ready to disperse many boons to his devotees as they surrounded him and performed kirtan for 21 hours in ecstasy. Then the Lord said, go bring Sridhar immediately. Let him see my opulences. He constantly thinks of me. Go to the outskirts of town and sit and listen for someone who's calling me. Then bring that person here. The Vaishnavs rushed to fulfill the Lord and went into the direction of Srihart's place. Now hear about Sridhar. He makes a living selling kola, the trunk of a banana tree. He, he buys whole banana trunks and sells it after cutting it into small pieces. In a day, half of what profit he makes, he spends by buying offerings from Mother Ganges. The other half he uses to, to maintain himself. Just like Maharaj Yudhisthira, he is most honest and truthful person. He quotes only the correct price for his products and never wavers. The customers who come, they buy whatever price he quotes. In this way, he lives in Navadvip. And he is known as Kolavecha, Srihar, the banana seller. At night, he spends the entire night chanting the holy names of Krishna, forgetting about sleep. He's surrounded by atheistic neighbors who say, we can't sleep because Sridhar screaming shatters our eardrums. The poor fellow cannot fill his body. And so he at night, he keeps awake because of the pains of hunger. These atheistic neighbors are inviting doom. Sridhar continues with his spiritual activities, not paying them any attention. With overwhelming love, he chants the holy names of the Lord. The devotees, 
they were calling. They said to him, please come, Srihar. Oh, Holy One, meet Lord Chaitanya and be in his August assembly. Hearing the mention of Lord Chaitanya, Sridhar, overwhelmed with ecstasy, fell unconscious to the ground. And the devotees quickly clipped him up, picked him up, and slowly and gently led him to the Lord. The Lord was extremely happy to see Sridhar and called a loud, warm invitation Come, come, you have sufficiently worshiped me. Many times you have spent, many lifetimes you have spent in my devotional service. I have tasted your banana leaves and banana ingredients many times. Do you remember our verbal exchanges? When Lord Chaitanya was manifesting his mood as a scholar, he was bold and insolent hiding his real identity. He would enjoy Sridhar's company on the pretext of bargaining with him. He would go to his place and purchase banana leaves, banana cups. Then they would argue about the price. The Lord would say, you know, I'll give you half the price. Then the Lord would, then Sridhar would say, no, no, this is the correct price. And the Lord would pick up the goods he wanted and pay only half the price. Then Sridhar would jump up and try to take the goods back from the Lord. The Lord would say, wow, my dear brother Sridhar, you are a renounced person, but I think you are very rich. If, you're, if, if so, then why do you try to snatch things from my hand? You don't know who I am. The Lord, Lord Chaitanya would see no anger on Sridhar's face. And again, he would snatch away the articles. Lord would like to tease him. Because of his natural attractive beauty, uh, Sridhar was enchanted by the Lord's presence. Once Sridhar said to the Lord, listen, O Brahman, please forgive me this time. I'm just your dog. The Lord replied, you are cunning. You have amassed much money by selling banana plates. Sridhar would respond, there are, not, there are not any other shops besides me. Then please purchase from them at a cheaper rate. The Lord says, I do wanna, don't want to abandon a steady supplier. I know something valuable when I see it. So he was very charming. But at the same time, he would tease Sridhar. Every day, the Lord would say, every day you buy offerings for Ganga, then why can you not sell me these things at a discount? And the Lord would say things like, I am the father of Mother Ganga. You worship daily. I'm telling you this, the truth. Sridhar was shocked and he would cover his ears saying, Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu. And then seeing Vishwarbar in an insolent mood, he gave him the banana plates. In this way, the Lord bargained and fought with Sridhar every day. Sridhar said, this boy is so beautiful, but he's so restless. <laughs> Finally, he would agree. All right, I give you, I'll even give it to you free at cost. Just leave me alone. <laughs> What if I lose, what will I lose if I give away a piece of banana leaf, a banana flower, or a banana root? And then he would give, and then the Lord said, good enough, don't give any more. And daily the Lord would use the gifts he received from Sridhar. 
the Lord loves to receive gifts from his devotees. He never asks anything from the non-devotees. The Lord said to Sridhar now, Behold my beauty, today I will bestow upon you the eight mystic perfections. Sridhar lifted his head and saw Vishwambar change into a beautiful dark complexion like a Tamil tree, he was holding a flute in his hands and he stood like Lord Balaram. The entire scene was engulfed in glowing radiance. Sridhar saw Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva approach, offering prayers in Vedana. And he saw Ananta there, saintly persons like Narada Muni, Sanat Kumar, Sukadeva Goswami, all surrounding the Lord, along with many heavenly damsels with folded hands singing the glories of the Lord. Seeing this wonderful sight, Sridhar just slumped to the ground. The Lord called to him and Sridhar, the Lord's command woke him and he stood up. The Lord said, say something in glorification of me. Sridhar said, I am illiterate and foolish. What intelligence do, intelligence do I possess to glorify your Lordship? The Lord says, whatever you speak is glorification. <laughs> By the Lord's order, Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, now presided over Sridhar's power of speech, and he began to speak. And he glorified the Lord in so many different ways. And then there's a long section, section of the glorification. He's just glorifying the Lord in so many ways. Upon hearing Mother Saraswati, how she empowered Sudhar to speak, all the Vaishnavas became filled with wonder. Then the Lord said, Sridhar, ask, ask for a boon. I shall give you the eight mystic powers. Sridhar answer, answered, what will I trade from you? Please do not insist and be peaceful at harm. There is nothing I require. The Lord, Lord replied, don't you see I am unhappy because I wish to give you a boon? Please take, ask, ask, the Lord entreated him continually. And then he said, may that enchanting boy who argues and gives coins for my banana leaves be my Lord and master birth after birth. May that young restless Brahmana who quarreled fiercely with me about the price of my supplies be my master. May he give me his lotus feet and his only treasure. Repeatedly offering glorifications to the Lord, Sridhar became absorbed in ecstatic love. Raising his hands, his eyes flooding with tears, he loudly cried. And Sridhar's depth of devotion manifested. All the assembly devotees were overwhelmed with spiritual emotions. And they also wept tears of transcendental ecstasy. The Lord responded, I shall make you the ruler of a great kingdom. I shall make you king amongst men. Sridhar responded, I have not the slightest interest. I only wish that you be my eternal master, that I may always sing your name in unwavering devotion. The Lord then spoke with a voice full of love. By your unalloyed devotion, you have made me your servant, Sridhar. Then the Lord said, I will bestow upon you eternal devotional service, which is the seeker even within the Vedas. The joyous, the devotees became joyous and everybody cried out in joy, 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 joy. joy. 
How can one recognize the true servant of Lord Chaitanya? Not by their wealth, not by their followers, not by material education. Temporary material ed education, wealth, beauty, fame, and a noble family have actually no value. They only tend to increase one's false pride and material illusion without limit. Shreed, who lived in a most slightly by selling bananas and banana roots by his devotion, was able to see the Lord before him, who was willing to fulfill any request. Even unlimited millions of kings and great sages throughout the universe can have never have such an opportunity. I will return in one second. I have to just attend to something quickly. False pride because of material assets cause one to develop aversion to devotional service, leading only to a life of material sense enjoyment. And one falls into the horrible depths of material consciousness. One who mocks the devotees of the Lord, considering them to be fools, suffering in poverty, surely goes to the hellish region. Who has the ability to comprehend the unlimited glories of the Vaishnavas, as whose lotus feet all material perfections away. Sridhar avoided getting the mystic perfections. He only wanted pure, unalloyed devotion to his Lord. If one happens to see a Vaishnava suffering by worldly estimation, one should know that, he is, that his suffering is not material. For a Vaishnava sees everything in the service of the Lord. Yeah, thus the austerities they, they perform actually become the source of spiritual bliss. One who is binded, blinded by material desires can never understand this truth. That truth is how the devotees apparently have nothing material, but still are in the highest stage of happiness. In fact, those who are unfortunate, they only desire material education and material wealth. Therefore, they can never recognize a Vaishnava. One who poses themselves as being a teacher of the great scripture, Srimad Bhagavatam, but has no devotion, simply their intelligence is destroyed. Those who find fault with Lord Nityananda simply walk the path of destruction. So glorifying his beloved Lord, Sridhar received this transcendental boon, unalloyed pure love for the Lord. One who avoids finding fault and blaspheming the devotees will attain the lotus feet of the Lord in devotion. Blaspheme the Vaishnava only brings the greatest sin. Therefore, true devotees of the Lord never offend anyone. If one calls out just once Krishna without offense, then that name will be his source of deliverance. So this is the story of Sridhar. And then it goes on. 
after bestowing this mercy upon Sridhar, Lord began to gently sway his head and repeat the name Nada, Nada, Nada. He spoke to Advaita Charya, asking him, What do you need? Acharya replied, My prayers have already been answered, my Lord. Lord Chaitanya appreciated this answer and with a thunderous roar that drowned out all other signs. So when the Lord was happy, man, sometimes he roared in ecstasy, and that roaring sometimes shook the entire universe. So so this Mahaprakash Leela goes on and on and on, and there's more, and we'll continue tomorrow. So I will stop here. The story of Sridhar really illustrates how one who has nothing is the greatest possessor of wealth. The wealth of bhakti. There is the wealth of material money. There is the wealth of education. There is the wealth of austerity. These are different forms of wealth, but the highest and most desirable and the most uh, undisturbed wealth, that wealth which only increases is the wealth of bhakti. One who has the wealth of bhakti has attained the highest form of treasure. And one who gives that wealth to others will notice that the wealth that they have will increase. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Uh, for the amazing glory of this Mahaprakash Leela. Uh, you emphasized yesterday also, but I think today I really realized one point that uh, we need to be very, very careful while dealing with any living entity. I'm not sure when Lord is engaging us. Uh, although we are not at that platform where Lord may appear like he exchanged with Shidhar, but this is a good learning that he can uh, play any Leela with us. So, Hare Krishna, Thank dear you. devotees. Sorry. Thank you, Manasi Ganga. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions or any comment, please unmute yourself. Or if you want me to read out your questions, you can type it in chat window. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. Thank you. I echo Masi Ganga's words. What a beautiful narration of Sridhar's pure devotion and loving and simple heart. How can we attain this kind of attraction for the Lord that we are completely uninterested anymore in acquiring material uh, acquisitions because the pull for getting this and that is so strong in this material world. Uh, it seems to me that it's a very big struggle to attain pure love and attention to simply the Lord's desire. <laughs> How to get that, uh, that one pointed mind the way we do it, there's two, there's two ways to do it. One is Shushusho Shradanasya, Vasudeva Kadaruchi, Shanyat Seva Vipa Punya Seva Natirtanat. By rendering service to great souls, great service is done, and by such service, one gets an affinity to hear the glories of the Lord. And then the next verse, Srinvata Svata Krishna Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha. 
Vridyanto sto abhidrani vidminoti suhit satam. That uh, one who develops this intense desire to hear the Lord, hear the glories of the Lord, the Lord works within the heart of the devotee to cleanse that devotee's heart from all misgivings and all material attachments. So that eagerness to hear about the Lord and the eagerness to serve the devotees of the Lord will awaken that one-pointed attachment on Krishna. Mm -hmm. These are the two-point formula. But then again, Maya is always there, distracting us, attracting us. And Maya is very intelligent. She knows exactly what you like. She's like an expert um, sales lady. She knows what, what you bought before, and therefore she sells, tries to sell you the same product again in a different way. So, but as we hear the glories of the Lord and serve the Vaishnavas, then gradually these, the tendency for material happiness and all the facilities that are connected with this kind of happiness such as the amenities that people chase after, the thises and the thats of this world. <laughs> I remember last night we were doing Harinam Sankirtan. So we passed one shop and I just happened to notice the shop. The shop was called the this and that shop. <laughs> So that means it was just a conglomeration of somebody's ideas of what people might buy. <laughs> you know, so was, there's a lot of this and a lot of that. But people are attracted to all this stuff. Their houses are full of junk. Their closets are full of stuff that they bought and no longer attractive anymore, but they store it in their houses. And you go along the highways, you find these big storage bins with, that are full of people's stored material possessions but that they'll never use, but they just continue to store. Thinking, I have this. There's no value in that. It just distracts our minds. So use your time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. So the internet is what it is. It's a net. It's called N-E-T, net. And it's also known as web. You get caught in the net, you get caught in the web. And then the spider of illusion comes and bites you and you're finished. You are addicted to the machine for whatever the machine will give you. And it has unlimited, you have YouTube, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, Instagram you have uh, well, I don't know what else is out there, but then I know there's a bunch of other. You have Twitter and you have, you know, Bitter and Jitter, whatever else is out there. And so many things to attract people's attention. People are bombarded with this stuff and they, they just get lost in it. And then they just waste their life. It's so many material things. Shopping has become a national pastime, going to the store and buying things.
Devotees don't need to buy anything. All they need to do is give away what they got. <laughs> so, usually devotees have more than they need. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj, you have summed it beautifully. The real problem in the material world, the attraction of this, that, and especially the internet. You're going to read one article, then from that comes another link. So you read the next article, and before you know it, half an hour is gone in reading all kinds of things that may not even be directly relevant to our service. So it's very pervasive. The other things other than Krishna. And as Vivek Prabhu said, we have to be so very careful in all our interactions, whether it's person, the material energy, to constantly remember that this is a, a big distraction and we have to really guard against the pull of Maya. Thank you so much. We want to become like Kolvecha Sridhar, completely in love with Krishna and only wanting Krishna. Yeah, we can always increase. Hare Krishna devotees, uh, any other questions, any comments? So just one observation Guru Maharaj while uh, other devotee ask any question, like Whenever Supreme Lord has given any darshan to devotee, whether it's a Prahlad Maharaj or Dhruva or like Yashida, like, like all like uh, many pastimes, most of the time one common observation is when Lord asks from the devotee that you ask something, they are saying, we don't need anything. We just need your shelter. We need you as like your mercy, your lotus, like shelter of your lotus feet. So I think this is also a big learning and as rightly Sri Devi Mataji asked that I think all this mercy is only possible when we are free from material desires. If we are having any tinge of material desires, then probably it's very difficult to get uh, mercy of Krishna. Yeah, because they distract your attention away. Material and spiritual opposite. The spirit material is simply a, a shadow of the reality. We live in a world of illusion. We think this is my body. These are my possessions. These are my family members. Janasamoham yam aham mameti is the disease of the conditioned souls. Moha, moha, moham, means illusion. What is that illusion? Aham, mameti. I am Indian, American, you know, go down the list of all the different I am's. I'm young, old. I am intelligent, I'm not so. So many eyes we attach to us. This is I and then mine. These are my family. This is my house. This is my, you know, material possessions, my car, my computer, whatever else I have. Mm. Well, these things are just given to us while we're living in this 
this wonderland of sense gratification, <laughs> but it simply causes our minds to become distracted from the real goal in life. One has to be simple, live simply, and take just what they need. And if they have extra, they can give it away or they can use it in Krishna's service for, to spread Krishna consciousness. Nowadays, you can't even give things away because people have so much and nobody needs anything. <laughs> It's really hard. I find it's hard to give things away nowadays. Somebody might accept something you give away just to be gracious for your gift. But generally, people don't, you can't give, even give things away now. People don't, people have everything they want and more. There used to be a bumper sticker that I, I would always see. The bumper stickers are these different little sayings that you can paste on, on the bumper of your car. And it was one I would see quite often when I was in America. And then it used to say, he who dies with the most toys wins. It's a very sarcastic Thing, but it gives a good message. In other words, collect as much as you can through whole, your whole life, and when you die, if you have more than anybody else, you're the winner. <laughs> it's a good statement. It was coming from the secular society. He who dies with the most toys wins. <laughs> it was done as a criticism for those who simply live to possess more and more. <laughs> Sometimes I see people have so much, they don't even know what they have. <laughs> it becomes like, they don't even discover things that they have that they didn't even know they have. <laughs> You buy these big houses. I remember I went to one house. I they had they handed me a map when I came into the house. I was visiting. I was preaching in one area, and they arranged for me to stay at this one person's house. And the person was the, the husband, the man in the family. He was a doctor, and the wife was also a doctor. Super wealthy house, huge house. And they gave me a map so I could get around without getting lost in the house. <laughs> it was so big. <laughs> I found it good for chanting Japa because I could walk everywhere. <laughs> that was about the only thing that I liked about the house. I had a lot of room for walking and chanting. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> it just seemed like I was thinking, who's going to clean this place? You know? I used to stay at one house where the house had 11 bathrooms, <laughs> only 11 bathrooms. And there wasn't more than four people living in the whole house. <laughs> You feel like you're in the spiritual world in Vaikuntha with all the opulence people have in their houses sometimes. Of course, when it's a devotee's house, it's different. They usually have devotional pictures all over the walls and they have a temple room where they worship their deities and they're always serving the devotees. That's nice. But to maintain such a thing requires Nowadays, people don't even maintain it. They just, they hire someone to come in and 
take care of all the cleaning and organizing. And you have to pay them a lot of money. And sometimes they don't, you have to keep them living in your house because you need them all the time. So better they don't go home. <laughs> so you give them a room in the house to live in. And you have another family member. Yeah, it's just like, we try to imitate Krishna. Dwarka dish. I first time heard Guru Maharaj that house can have a map, like somebody house can have a map. It's... Oh yeah, yeah, it was so big. It was like, I thought I was in an, an arena or something. I had, I had at least three floors to the place and you know, each floor was like, you know, unlimited space with so many rooms and it was good in one sense. I had my own room and I could be completely quiet because, you know, there was hardly anybody else around. But I think we are full of Guru Maharaj Falls like these kind of association and false prestige. Sometimes I would go to these houses and, you know, the proprietors would say, Maharaj, this is your house. And I would say, no, it isn't. It's your house because I don't want it. <laughs> you keep it. <laughs> Of course, they were gesturing to say that, you know, as they are showing respect, but <laughs> I, would always, I would always say, no, it's your house. <laughs> I don't really need it. <laughs> They're trying to convert material house to a spiritual house, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> yeah, do that. Make your house into a mandir. <laughs> Have a have a big temple room in your house. Then you have a then the house becomes a mandir, and that's the idea. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Hari Krishna devotee, uh, we are left with just like few minutes. Any last questions or comment? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, I, I was very much touched by this uh, story of uh, uh, Sridhar and I, I was thinking that uh, uh, it's for sure that I wouldn't be able uh, to be so austere. And how can, uh, how can we... Um, uh, we decide what kind of, uh, not simplicity, but I would really say that uh, how much austerity uh, we, should, we should take. Uh, what is our level? You just, make, you just make a division. What do I need and what do I want? And you check and you go around your room and you see what you need and what you want. What are the things I need and what are the things I actually have that I don't really need, but I want them. Then you see, is it really necessary? Well, maybe it is. I like it, so I keep it. Maybe it's not necessary, so I get rid of it or put it away or give it away. Um, no, you, all you have to do is divide, div divide your everything you have into two categories, the needs and the wants. Mm -hmm. Like yes, sometimes I, you know, I've been living in people's houses for the last 20 years going traveling. And so they put me in so many different houses and different places. Sometimes I walk into the bathroom and 
all over the bathroom, there's creams and lotions and hairsprays and hair fixings and this and that and this and that. I can't even see the walls, you know. <laughs> it's like hundreds of, it looks like I walked into a drugstore or something. <laughs> so, uh, <you> know, <laughs> is your bathroom like that? <laughs> Uh, it was when I had uh, uh, another girl living with me. She had, uh, I think, uh, three tables were full of with this, but mine is not this, like that. Cos this cosmetic, that lipstick, this face cream, that eye eye ointment, <laughs> this ear finish, and <laughs> so it's like, whoa. Yeah, it's a uh, special needs of <laughs> Motajis, I think. But <laughs> I I just have this difficulty that, <clears throat> as they used to say, that sometimes we uh, we cannot really judge what is uh, what are our needs and what uh, uh, what are our desires. So sometimes we think that I need something which is actually uh, not needed, but uh, but just just wants. Mm -hmm. Well, so, you can, the category of needs are food, medicines, and uh, an environment where you can do your, you can live. Like, sometimes devotees have no furniture. <laughs> they just have their, uh, you know, desk and that's it. <laughs> There's no furniture. And some of the people have so much furniture, you know, you, you just you can't even walk, you know. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes when, when there are so many furnitures, we have a tendency to to fill them <laughs> with many things. <laughs> so furniture is a dangerous thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, one time I went to somebody's house, I was sitting on their couch, and I just happened to reach inside the couch underneath the cushions, and I found a whole storehouse of stuff that had been, that fell there. Pencils, pens, money. <laughs> it's like, the couch became a, like a place where people just deposit stuff from their pockets. <laughs> So I was picking. I was picking it all up. I cleaned the whole couch and gave it all to the <laughs> They were more shocked than I was. <laughs> so yeah, it's just it's ridiculous how much stuff we have, and it's it's actually, you know, when you lose something, you 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 have a tendency to adjust, and then you can live without that item. But when you have it, you think you need it. But when you lose it, then you realize you didn't. You can live without it. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. I, I, that's a that's a fact that I've seen and have also experienced that you have something you think you need it, and then you lose it, and then you realize you can live without it. You're forced to live without it, so you adjust. <laughs> Yeah, it's very interesting. Probably this is uh, the reason why Krishna helps us with this. Sometimes losing things which uh, we think we need, but actually don't. Yeah. I, I've heard one interesting story about this uh, uh, this topic. One, uh, one uh, my, my boss said that uh, one of his, uh, his friends, they, uh, they put a lot lot of money uh, into the attic and they forgot about it and many many years later they found it and uh, there were mice uh, in the attic and they they chewed the money <laughs> so, it was really really funny yeah this is uh, if you don't use you lose <laughs> yes 
Oh, but Thank also you. interrupted us about that. I was listening today. He was also saying you keep, if you just keep saving money after some time, you wind up losing it because if you don't use it, you lose it somehow or other. It gets taken away either by thieves or by taxes or by something. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting, but uh, so is it a problem, for example, when we, we try to save some money for, for old, old age? Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's allowed. That's allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mentioned. Usually that's, they say you keep, if you have a particular income, you divide your income into three parts. 50% for the devotees, 25% to live on, and 25% for savings. Mm -hmm. But those are the three categories. Use some for religious principles, projects, some to maintain yourself, and some for savings. Mm -hmm. But there's people who just save, and that's all they do. And they just find happiness in having a lot and never use it. It's called miser. Yeah. It's an interesting type of person who just collects and, and doesn't do anything and doesn't mm -hmm. use it for, for anything and actually lives like a poor, poor person. Yeah, I know. I I used to know them. There's one person. He was he was living very poor, but he had millions of dollars in the bank. <sighs> the idea is everything belongs to Krishna. That's the whole thing. And if when we understand that principle and use it, that these items take us closer to renunciation, which leads to bhakti. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much for giving your very valuable time in association. Okay, so we'll continue tomorrow. There's many, many other wonderful pastimes of Lord Chaitanya bestowing his mercy upon his eternal associates. So we'll continue with the narration tomorrow. It's one of the more exciting Leelas in Krish and Gaur Leela. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Gurudev ki jai, Anant Koti Vishnu Brand ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. I will make a very strong effort now to give away things that I don't really need. Did you get all your boxes? <laughs> still, still on the way. Some of them are still on the way, but believe me, I'm on a campaign now to give up practically everything. Yeah, well, if, if you give them away, you don't have to carry them to India, and that way it'll co cost you less to travel. Right. I'm only concerned that I will carry my books and whatever few clothes I need. I think that's all that I really want. Everything else can go. Yeah. The problem is nobody wants anything anymore and you can't even give it away. That's the problem. <laughs> that is so true. So true. The only reason I'm going through all of them very carefully is because I don't want to make anything important. And I'm still looking for your diary because on the off chance that somehow it's there. That's the only reason. Otherwise, I would just not even look at that stuff and give it away. I'm I'm really, really sure the diary is in India. Mm. In your story. Yeah. Okay. Because that's, that's that's what I, I really strongly feel that's in India. Okay. Okay. But just in case, it's good to look. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Because without that, without that diary, my my whole that whole thing has a uh, 
a nine month gap in the whole narration. So right. really, it'll make everything incomplete. Right. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I'll uh, transcribe the rest of November and December and send it to you as soon as I finish. Yeah, I was working on your diary today, what you sent so far. It's getting yeah, better. It's, it's easier to edit as opposed to what it, what it used to be. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I'm trying to keep your directives in mind as I'm doing it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Hiptesh, hello. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Thank you. Yeah, Lord Chaitanya's leelas are very sweet. Indeed. I didn't realize that till I started reading Chaitanya Charitamrita and finished this, and I was relating it to my son that uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita is so sweet. And he says, but dad, I have to read the Bhagavatam first before I read Chaitanya Charitamrita. You told me so. So, <laughs> so thank you. Actually, actually, Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati tells us the other way around. Chaitanya Charitamrita first. He says, yeah, those who read Chaitanya Charitamrita first will have a greater understanding of Bhagavatam. He, he, he phrases it differently. Um, because actually Chaitanya Charitamrita is, is living Bhagavatam. Because Bhagavatam means the life of the Lord, the glories of the Lord. So that's what that is. Chaitanya Charitamrita is the glories of the Lord. And just to indicate that, when Srila Prabhupada presented his Srimad Bhagavatam, he uh, prefaced the Bhagavatam with about a 60-page narration of the Lord, Lord Chaitanya's life. You find that at the very beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Just to show that this, this, the life of Lord Chaitanya is living Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Thank Krishna. you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Thank Krishna. you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Shamrani. Shamrani, how are you? Are you okay? I'm now? good now. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Um, yes, I'm so much better. So much better, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Your Mercy. Yeah. Just keep your diet simple. Yes. And just keep good health if you eat simply. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept all my blessings. Thank you for a lovely class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for a lovely class. And Sue. You. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Susanna, Agne. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much for the Hare Krishna. Dini. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the class. Our illustrious artist, Namrata. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not that much good, Maharaj. <laughs> Just what Krishna said, mercy, I can do so much. The artwork is so nice. It could be could be displayed in some places. It's really quite quite nice. Thank you, Maharaj. I'm waiting when I could be, you know, of some my art could be some great use for Krishna. Thank you. 
I might have some seva for you. <laughs> definitely, Maharaj. I'm, I'm definitely open for that. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.